sanctuary this morning, and our purpose is to do the best we can through worship together. So, for those of you online, we encourage you to chime in with your prayer requests, greeting one another, go right ahead and ignore me at times, and say hello to folks. This can be incredibly lonely. Even as we have this hope for a vaccine that's not here yet, where we're clinging to our desires to get back to normal, whatever that is, it's so hard to run this marathon. Especially friends from a marathon runner recently um, told my wife, Tina, the last few miles are the hardest to run. If we are in the end of this marathon and begin back in February of, or March of 2020, we're getting near the end. It's hard. That's why they often have the folks standing near the finish line to encourage you on. So, can encourage each other, whether it's online here, just saying hello or greeting one another, please do so. That'd be a beautiful gift. While we have that going on, we want to remind you that whenever we get back into worship here, to be intentional about wearing your mask, be intentional well about keeping six feet difference. This thing will be live streaming, and we're working on an app, improving our live stream option, but right now we still have YouTube, we still have Facebook. Friends, you continue to put me in awe for your generosity, and even more so how you worship God for the giving of your tithes and your offerings. So however you do that, mailing it in, but your financial institution takes care of it if you go online through Vanco, or if you're using instead our Give Plus app, whatever it is, you continue to show me your heart as you continue to worship God through the giving of your tithes and your offerings. Thank you. A couple other notes as well. Our orders for our window August ornaments are coming due to be intentional by getting those in as soon as possible. Please contact us at the church office if you're interested in one of the ornaments for window August. $12, just make sure you contact us in the church office. Send us an email, make a phone call to 724-662-3320. You can email us at mercerumc at hotmail.com, whatever it is, to contact us about one of the Wendell August ornaments for Christmas. There are quite a few left if you're so inclined. Friends, you can also drop off items for our hat and mitten tree. That, that is looking beautiful at this point, but please bring those items to the church office. Call us first, and we'll keep on decorating that tree, but more so, so that whether it's kids at Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh, Prince of Peace in Farrell, or Mercer Elementary, but those students who are in need of hats and gloves and mittens and whatnot are able to have them for Christmas. And I need to say thank you. One, your willingness to be flexible 
at this time. This is so frustrating for those of us in leadership. Thank you. You are willing to still check in and we'll do this worshiping God on live stream. Two, I want to need to make sure I say thank you to our trustees who met yesterday for a uh, work service day. They fixed some windows, they put up smoke detectors, and um, as well as carbon monoxide detectors. So I need to say thank you to Terry Hankson, as well as Rodney and Michelle Gehring, as well as Chuck Orr, as well as Ross Vernon. Did I miss anybody? Wonderful. And also I need to say thank you to Ross and Sue Vernon, who put up a new nativity scene outside of the front church entrance. Watch online here as we're put be posting pictures and whatnot. So you get a sense of what's going on. So I want to say thank you to the Vernons. What a beautiful scene that is. And also, if you've driven by before, Joseph doesn't look like he's going to be falling over all the time. Past years, Joseph had some issues standing for a while. Guess the man was tired, but we'll talk about that later. Friends, you've got a second here. If you're online, greet one another with the love of Christ. So make sure if you're using Facebook to greet one another. Sadly, YouTube doesn't allow us to do that with their privacy settings for children's programming. But we encourage you to continue to reach in there. So greet one another. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Facebook as well for this morning. It's taken from Psalm 34. So friends, if you're at home and want to stand, please stand, but let's be together for our call to worship. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. They wickedly mock me more and more when I stumble. You have seen, O Lord, do not be silent. Do not be far from me. Vindicate me. O Lord my God, that my tongue shall tell of your righteousness. I will tell of your praise all day long. Praise the Lord. Friends, let's sing together. His name is wonderful.
Friends, you can also find the Apostles' Creed and what we've emailed out in Facebook posted as well. So in the midst of all the chaos around us, the fear we may feel, what do you still hold on to? Where is your hope? Friends, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born on the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Friends, our Advent reading this morning will be led by Michelle Gehring, who was kind enough to come in this morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. Joseph didn't want to humiliate Mary, and so he wanted to break off their engagement quietly. Hush! Keep it quiet. That might have been Joseph's thinking. But the thing is, God had a bigger plan. Jesus was to be born to Mary in, his, in this surprising way. Instead of fearing what others thought, Joseph and Mary would face the name calling together. And because they did, God brought the Savior of the world to two very caring parents. Joseph and Mary didn't fear what others thought when they married. So don't fear what others think about your faith as you follow Jesus. As the hymn of grace and God of glory puts it, grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour, for the facing of this hour. Let us pray. Lord God, loving Father, thank you that you save us through Jesus. Give us courage to follow Jesus. Amen. Michelle, thank you. You're welcome. Well, speaking of courage there, kids, if you're ready, it's time for our children's message. So we want to talk a little bit about Joseph this morning. If... I hold him by his head. I don't know if you like that. But if you notice, there's Joseph right here from our nativity scene. There he is. He's holding a lantern. Oh my goodness. And then I dropped it. Don't tell on me, Bonnie. All right. Here's his lantern. Um, see it? Here we go. Right there. There it is. Look, there's our camera right there. I'll put that in my bucket so I don't drop it. Here's Joseph. Joseph gets this weird dream. I mean, scary weird dream. There he is, hanging out and wondering what he's going to do because his, the girl he's engaged to, suddenly she has a child. The child's coming, that is. She's pregnant. He doesn't know what to do. He's thinking about leaving her. He's thinking about divorcing her because engagement laws were that strict back then. He doesn't know what to do. And then he gets this dream. An angel comes to him as Michelle just read. And he has this dream where an angel comes to him and says, don't be afraid. 
Matter of fact, if the baby is coming, he'll be named Jesus. You got a name of Jesus, Joseph. He's a child from God. Not born the normal way, but a child from God. You're to protect him, you're to be his dad. Weird. This is how it normally doesn't happen. This is weird. And yet, Joseph, listen, he was willing to show courage. I'm going to put Joseph down so I don't break him. But for you and for me, we're going to have to show courage. We live in some times that are a little bit worrisome. With the coronavirus, not being able to meet in school again, we have some things that might be worrisome to us. We're going to see folks still wearing masks everywhere. We're not going to be able to be with each other. Kids, it's not going to be easy. And yet, it's also time for us to show courage. Joseph was willing to stand out. How about you? I know you kids. So many of you are willing to be who God made you to be. So for those of you who feel that kind of courage, keep on being yourself. <coughs> Pardon me. And for those of us where it's tough at times, remember Joseph. He's going to face all sorts of name calling and ridicule. And yet he's still willing to do what God would have him do. To not be afraid. Because we hear from the shepherds, <clears throat> hear from the shepherds, heard from the angel, fear not, because God's brought about good tidings of great joy. Jesus is born. He changes everything. So when we face these days, be like Joseph, show courage. Amen and amen. Now, kids, if you were here, here's what I had for you this morning. Sometimes when we follow Jesus, we're going to stand up from everybody else. So what I had this morning were eyeball gumballs. Mm -mm -mm. They taste good for 30 seconds, and then they're gone. But if you're looking for an eyeball gumball, that's what they look like. Isn't Look at what you're missing out on. No. We'll get to these to you later. For those of you who have had them before, they are awful. You're welcome. Let's pray. Father, give us courage to face these hours. Give us strength to stand up for Jesus. Thank you that Jesus was sent for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kids, you were great. Well done. Thank you so much. All right, grown-ups and kids, we need to be thinking now at this time what we need to be praying for, what you want to thank God for, and what you want to praise God for who God is.
If you're going to post a prayer request, be intentional about praying for other folks too. And if you're just here and nothing's coming to mind to lift up this morning, be intentional about praying for those requests that come in. A couple of notes from the prayer requests that were sent out this week. Jim Husband also passed away. That would be Barb Husband's husband. Jim passed away. That would be Jim and Jeannie Harper's daughter, Bess, father-in-law. So Bess' family lost both her mother-in-law her father-in-law. So be praying for the husband family. Louise Gross also passed away. So be praying for Louise Gross's family. And so from our midst, especially the Roddies, to be praying for them as well at this time. Friends, keep on typing in those prayer requests. Do we have anything from here this morning? Yeah, Bonnie Jordan. I want to thank God for courage. Thank God for courage. Amen. Yeah, Dale. Terry starts therapy Thursday, or t tomorrow. I'll we'll get it right yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for courage, and also be praying for Dale's brother, Carrie, as he starts therapy tomorrow. Wonderful. Friends, let's go to God together in prayer. Father, grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. That hymn keeps on jumping out at me as a theme hymn in the midst of the coronavirus. Father, it seems to be so much to be fearful of. And yet, the one we ought to fear, you, showing you awe and showing you respect as we fear you, God. See, we, we often push you to the side. Forget us. You're the God who deserves that kind of awe. The sort of awe where we stop and look at a fantastic Christmas light display. Or a sunset or a sunrise and see beautiful colors in the clouds. We stop and have that awe for you, God. Where we see incredible things happening in front of us, like snow melting. And to realize that even greater is the God who made the snow. We thank you, Father, for your love and your care for us. That although we're called to fear you, what's beautiful is that we don't have to be afraid of you. You are the God who sent his son Jesus for us. Talk about love. We don't have to fear you or be afraid of you, Father, but to show you our that respect. And yet we're facing these hours with the coronavirus, which seems to be coming faster and harder and stronger. We're praying for strength, Father. We're praying for those who we know who have the coronavirus to be healed in Jesus' name. We pray to you, Father, for the protection you have shown so many of our families, the protection you've shown so many of us personally, protection that you've shown this church where I know of only a few people who have tested positive for the coronavirus. We praise you for it. And yet, Lord, we come before you as cold season, as flu season comes upon us, as coronavirus numbers seem to be skyrocketing. We're asking, Father, for you to heal and move and work. You are the God who brought about the plagues in the time of Moses, and you are the God who ended the plagues. We're praying, Father, for an end. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We pray for wisdom for those working on vaccines, for those who administer vaccines, for those who are working for an end completely to the coronavirus. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Give us that kind of courage as we thank you that you are the God who gives us courage. Joseph willing to face those days. Shepherds willing to listen to an, 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 a powerful angelic messenger and that angel. Give us that kind of courage to face these hours. We're praying, Father, for the husband family as Christmas approaches and grief is strong. We pray for your healing touch in Jesus' name. Father, we live before you in the Gross family. We ask that you would be with Louise's family. We're praying, Father, for comfort and peace as Christmas approaches. We pray in Jesus' name. And for so many of us where Christmas is not a time of just joy, but there's still grief and sadness, we're praying for healing as well. Lord, we pray for healing as well for Dale's brother Terry as physical therapy starts tomorrow. We ask, Father, that you move and work through that time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. For so many of us, we have to face things we don't want to face, whether it be taxes or paying bills, going to see the doctor for physical therapy or going to the grocery store. Give us courage to face these days. 
Father, move and work through us. Give us that kind of courage to listen, to heed your warnings, to do what you call us to do, and to stand tall. We see that with Jesus, who was willing to take on the cross for us. We thank you that you sent him at the very beginning with that purpose, as he was named Jesus, for the Lord to save his people from their sins. The Lord saves. That's what your name means, Jesus. So we want to thank you and we want to praise you as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our scripture text this morning is from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. As Bonnie makes her way forward, would you pray with me? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning. Reading today is Matthew 1, 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will call him Jesus because he will save the people, his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as an angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he didn't have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to a son. Joseph called him Jesus. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Don't be afraid of what they think. Here's my version of maybe what Moses would have been feeling whenever he got that news. Because don't be afraid of what they think. There's Moses. There's Joseph. I said Moses, didn't I? There's Joseph. Mary's husband and Jesus' adopted father. And Joseph gets this news that Mary's going to be pregnant. In those days, that was a no-no. Matter of fact, it's not going to just look bad for Mary. Joseph knows it's going to look bad for him. I wonder what he would have been thinking. Maybe something along these lines. What do I do with Mary? I mean, what do I do with her? She's suddenly expecting this child, and I know it's not mine. What do I do? I mean, I could take her out to the outskirts of the city, and have the zealots kill her. But that's not what I want to do. I care too much for her. I don't even think that she did anything improper here. I mean, she told me that this was a miraculous, a miraculous event. But, but what do I do? Do I turn my back on her? Do I ignore her? Do I call her out in the public square? No, I care too much for Mary. I don't think that's what God would have me do. What do I do with Mary? I mean, we're supposed to be married, and we're supposed to go to Bethlehem to be registered for that census. But what do I do with her? If I turn my back on her and publicly disgrace her, 
then I'm hurting her, and I don't think that's what God would have me do. If I marry her, then I have to deal with all the insults and the ridicule, not just against Mary, and not just against the, the child that will come, but I'm going to have to face that ridicule myself. What do I do? I guess what I could do, Joseph may have said, I guess what I could do is I could try to divorce her quietly. I mean, our, our engagement rules are such that at this point I still would have to divorce her, but I could do it quietly. I could sign the paperwork and let Mary lead her own life. I guess that's the best thing I could do. Because I don't even know if she'd want to be with me. I mean, she, she may have been with someone else. I don't think so, but she could have been. What do I do? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this? You're an angel claiming to be from God? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> obviously I'm terrified. You're telling me what? That I, that I shouldn't? Divorce Mary quietly? That I should take her to be my wife? But that's going to be so much ridicule. There's going to be so much making fun of me. There's going to be so much headache with that. Matter of fact, you're telling me it's not going to be easy? You're telling me that God's sending this boy? Wait a second. You're telling me that God sent this boy to save all of God's people from their sins? I'm going to call him Jesus because that means the Lord saves. I know what it means. Are you sure, angel, that I, that I didn't eat too late last night? Are you sure that the wine I had with dinner last night wasn't a little too off? Are you sure that I didn't watch something weird on TV? Oh, wait. That's right. There's no TV yet. So if you want me to take her home to be my wife, you want me to follow through with this? Are you sure about that, that God sent him? Come on, are you positive? No. Was I watching something really weird on Netflix? No. There's not even Netflix yet, is there? No, I guess what you're telling me to do is to take Mary home, to be my wife, to face all the ridicule and the laughter, to follow through, because you've got a bigger plan in place. That's what you want me to do? You know that's not going to be easy. They're going to make fun of him. They're going to make fun of her. He's going to be an outcast. Because people know. Yes, I know. And they're going to make fun of me too. But I guess I don't care what they think. I'm not afraid of what they think. Now, friends, I don't know if that's what really went through Moses' mind, or Joseph's mind. Why am I saying Moses this morning? Can anybody fix that? I don't know if that's what went through Joseph's mind. But there is an aspect of life where we have to deal with the reality that there are difficulties when we follow Jesus, that there will be folks who make fun of us, that we will be attacked. On the screens, although you can't see it, but if you're going to see the email version, the pictures that we sent out, and we'll post them to the Facebook page later today indicates a sheep standing up amongst the crowd. Because there will be times when we're as Christians, we've got to be like Joseph and stand out. Send some other pictures as well, you'll see later. A tree by itself in a field, another tree in the darkness with terror. Where there are times where we're going to have to stand out on our own for our faith. Joseph met with the angel by himself. Let's not, let's not dismiss that. There are moments as Christians we have to be by ourselves. Get that, because for many of us, you're at home watching this by yourself or your spouse. And at times you're going to be so frustrated with your spouse or your kids, you want them to be locked out of the house. Others of us, we're by ourselves. There will be times where God's asking you to take a stand, like he asked Joseph to, because that's how God works. You'll see some other weird pictures as well, and ladies don't laugh at the picture of the horses with the, or the people with the weird horse masks on, look for the image later on. Because instead, there are going to be times where you and I, we need to stand out and stand aside from the crowd. Just like Joseph did. The story goes like this. While he was his duck, and he was a wild duck, and as he flew in that formation with his other duck friends heading south for the winter, while he looked down, he saw what we call as a farm, that didn't really excite him much. But what we saw 
all these beautiful ducks down by this beautiful pond. They look clean, they look safe. Those ducks were so good looking. While he was a lonely duck, he thought maybe he could find a nice little duck girlfriend down there. And so while he spun down and went down to where that pond was at that farm and landed there and tried to talk with the ducks that were there. He heard his friends up above squawking away. But he suddenly saw how beautiful these ducks were, how well fed they were. They were in such, they were so much bigger and looked so much healthier than his duck friends who were flying south. That Wally decided that maybe I'll just stay here for a little bit. The water looked so clean. Wally looked around, there was, there was no threat. Every time that they would land, he had to worry about what might happen. This looks safe. Obviously, look at the shape of these ducks. There's no fear in them. It must be safe. And so Wally decided he would stay with those ducks for a while. Wally finally was able to communicate with them and he spent time with them and realized as his duck friends had flown south for the winter, he didn't have to fly anymore. He saw where the ducks went, and they had this beautiful, what we call a barn, and they, the ducks rested there for the winter. It was warm and comfortable. Oh, and he didn't have to feel tired all the time. He wasn't always looking over his shoulder, fearing the sound of hunters or other animals. It was just the ducks. And once in a while, the farmer would walk by, and there was a dog on the farm, but the dog left them alone. Oh, what an enjoyable winter. Oh, finally as spring started to come, Wally started to feel refreshed. and started to feel this sense that maybe he was supposed to get somewhere. And then he heard them, his friends flying back overhead as they headed north for the summer. Oh my goodness, how wonderful. Look at my friends, the ducks. Wally hadn't been flying much that winter. It was so easy to stay inside. So Wally, when he heard his friends, he looked back at his, the tame ducks there, as we call them at the farm, and waved goodbye to them, and then he started to flap his arms. Flap his arms. So I'm flapping my arms. Wally would flap his wings. Thank you. As he tried to get up into the air. And Wally got about 10 feet or so into the air, and then realized, oh my goodness, I have not flown for so long. My arms hurt. So my arms. Wally's wings hurt so much that he couldn't fly. Wally came down with a thud to the ground below, right by the farm, almost landed in the pond, and realized it was going to be very difficult for him to catch up to his friends. They were squawking, they were calling to him, he heard their voices, he missed them, but he knew he couldn't make it. I'm going to have to do better, Wally thought. I'm going to make sure that I'm able to fly with them this winter. So Wally prepared himself for a week or two. It was so comfortable. It was so comfortable being on the farm. They brought food to you. You didn't have to go foraging. You had to forage when you wanted to. It was almost like a game. You could go swimming when you wanted. Well, he still was trained to work around a bit for any predators, but there was no threat. Wally, that whole summer, quickly forgot about getting ready to fly away. It was too enjoyable just spending time talking with the other ducks telling stories or making up stories. They liked to listen to his stories about being in the wild. So much so, he probably told them the same story four, five, six, seven different times. And yet, they constantly seemed to be amazed or forgotten when he told it before. And then, while he realized winter was coming, he could feel it in the air. He still had that call within him that he needed to head south. He heard his friends flying up ahead, above, and he realized, oh no, I really haven't worked on it. Maybe I haven't practiced, I haven't flown much at all this year, but I'll try. And so while he tried to fly, and he flapped his wings a bit, he got a foot off the ground. And that's it. It was too hard. While he landed, not with a thud, but a bit of a gentle skid. He looked up at those birds flying overhead and smiled to himself and said, I'll get ready next summer. It's going to be so enjoyable here, though. It's so comfortable. It's so safe. The next spring came, and as he heard his friends flying overhead, and they squawked at him, while he looked up, smiled to himself, thought, I maybe ought to get ready next, for next winter. But then he got back to eating and spending time with the other ducks. 
And as fall came and winter was approaching, Wally heard the call of the ducks overhead. Smiled to himself and said, yeah, that's what I used to do, but this is so enjoyable, it's so safe. Wally had always noticed that whenever the farmer came, that it seemed like one of the, the, his duck friends would leave and never come back, but it was so comfortable and so safe, why worry? And as Wally stood there on the edge of that pond by himself and saw the farmer coming, he realized, huh, he might be coming to get me. I wonder what's going to happen. Friends, when we, don't, when we try to look like everybody else around us, we can all become too much like Wally. When we're so concerned about what others think about us as Christians, we can cave in and look like everyone else. But for Wally in that story, that leads to death. For you and for me as Christians, when we try to look like everyone else, when we're not concerned about standing up for truth, when we are afraid of what they'll think, that can lead to death. In the story about Wally, it led to him becoming somebody's dinner. For us, we wanted that face, have the kind of courage that Joseph had to stand up and do what God would have us do. When we're willing to stand up and have courage to not be afraid of what they'll think, God can do incredible things through us. In the 1980s, and I'm going to butcher the town name, Timisoara, Romania. Laszlo Tokes was a pastor of Timisoara's small Hungarian Reformed Church. Laszlo preached the gospel boldly, but the problem with that was that the Communist Party did not like that. Matter of fact, the Communist Party began to threaten him that if he didn't shut up about sharing about Jesus, about life through Jesus Christ, about how Jesus died on the cross for us, that there's only forgiveness of sins through Jesus. When they threatened him to keep his mouth shut, Laszlo realized that the threats weren't just words. One night, as he was in the church preaching that evening, suddenly the other townspeople came running and yelled inside the church, they're coming for you, they're coming for you. His church members got up and they left the building. Wow, Laszlo felt terrified because he realized he was going to have to face the communists by himself. But Pastor Toast prepared himself to be ready to be arrested. And yet he heard a commotion outside. He looked outside of the church building, and there was, lined up outside, not only folks from his church, but folks from every other church in that town. They were lined up and circling the church building, backs to the church facing the communist police. The police were coming to arrest Laszlo Tokes, and instead of everyone hiding, they stood strong. They stood there for a day, and silent protests against the communists. The communists weren't, did not break through. The next day, the police came again. And as evening approached, a young man named Daniel pulled out of his pocket quite a few candles. They passed out the candles, and suddenly the candles were lit. And next thing you know, surrounding that church was this army of candles lit, protesting the communists coming to take away Pastor Tokes. He's inside concerned about people outside being arrested or hurt. And yet, in Romania in the 1980s, as they faced the Communist Party, he knew as well that his life expectancy would not be good in prison. But he also realized that people outside would have difficulties as well. They began singing boldly, though, holding their candles in protest against the Communists coming to arrest Pastor Tokes. Finally, the, the Communist police were able to break through that human barricade, but it had been it had reached national, even more so, international news outlets about what was going on as Toast and his wife were arrested. It seemed to spark this revolution in Romania, where it wasn't just about Pastor Toast and his family being arrested because he preached the gospel, but soon in Romania and around the world, they saw how bad that communist leadership had become. It sparked a revolution. That night, though, as they arrested Pastor Tokes and took him away, gunshots began to be fired, and the police began to shoot at the crowd. And Daniel, a young man who had handed out candles, was shot. His leg was blown off. One of his two legs would never be repaired. Pastor Tokes, while in prison, watched as that government fell apart the communists were overthrown. 
As he was released from prison, he quickly, as soon as he could, go visit people, and he found where Daniel, the young man that handed out candles, was. He went to visit Daniel and said, Daniel, thank you so much, but you lost your light for this. And Daniel's reply was, it was an honor, sir. It was an honor. Besides, I'm the one who lit the first candle. He wasn't afraid of what they think. There will be times where you're going to face opposition because of Jesus. Joseph and Mary would. As we will see later on in their life, they had to move constantly because of Jesus. You will, we will see, even more so, the courage it took Jesus to live his life. Friends, to follow Jesus means we need courage. The coronavirus is our obvious thing right now to have courage about. About the courage to go to the store. Having the kind of courage to do what we believe is the right thing to do. But even more so as Christians, we're called to have courage because there will be times when what we do or what we say is laughable. But you never know what God might do through you. You might be the one who lights the first candle and sparks a revolution. You might be the one who encourages someone else to not get so comfortable that they're slowly leading to death, just like Wally the duck, but instead, they have the kind of courage that Joseph had to face ridicule, to have people dismiss you or talk about you behind your back, and to stand up for something greater. They have that kind of courage. Don't be afraid of what they'll say. Don't be afraid of what they'll think. If for no other reason, Jesus wasn't. So, here's your assignment this week, if you choose to accept it. Step out of your comfort zone this week when it might cost you. It might be inviting someone to Christmas Eve worship online or our drive-in service. Telling someone why Christmas is important to you. Standing up for someone else. I don't know what that'll be. But intentionally this week, step out of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid of what they'll think. For me, whether it is getting ready for driving and worship on Christmas Eve, which is completely out of my comfort zone. Doing the live stream only version for worship again. I'm already having to do that, friends. This takes courage. To face the people who don't want to do what you're suggesting needs to be done. It takes courage. <laughs> In comparison to someone facing a rifle for the gospel, this is not much. You're going to find something. It might not be so extreme. Most likely, and hopefully it isn't so extreme, as to possibly lose a limb for Jesus. But, God might just have something incredible for you to do. So don't be afraid of what they think. Amen and amen. Would you pray with me? You could find the prayer in the email that we sent out. But I'm going to encourage you to instead, to at home, here in a sanctuary, whatever it might be, to close your eyes, turn your hands up toward heaven, and repeating after me, let's talk with God as we pray. Friends, let us pray. Lord God, loving Father, I love you. God of grace and God of glory, on your people pour your power. Crown your ancient church's story. Bring its bud to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage. For the facing of this hour. For the facing of this hour. Empower me to not fear what they think. Empower me to not fear what they think. I pray in Jesus' name. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, let's sing together. Whether we're at home, but still we're raising us up together. Angels we have heard on high.
Come on, I have to catch my breath after that. Wow. Too petty, that was slick, trying to get Bonnie and I to sing a duet up here without music. Yeah, we call that acapella, not for this fella. Oh, that was so fun. It's tough to keep track of everything on a regular Sunday, let alone when we have to do things out of the ordinary or in a way that we don't want to. But friends, we are thankful that you've talked tuned in. We're thankful that you're willing to join us. I'm especially grateful to Dale and to Michelle and to Bonnie and to Patty for their willingness to be here. What a gift it is. Now, here's an invitation for you today. That would be Sunday, December 13th, beginning at 2 p.m. through 5 p.m. We're going to have our open house. Tina and I, instead of having it in the parsonage, we'll invite you to drive into the upper parking lot for the Mercy High Methodist Church here, and we'll have our drive through open house. We bagged cookies yesterday. i got to tell you, holy cow, was that hard to not nibble. But don't worry, I didn't nibble on the cookies I put into the bags. So you're going to be safe. But whether it be the molasses cookies, or the peppermint kiss cookies, or if it be the peanut butter blossoms, or whether it be, oh my goodness, should I name all of them? I'm getting hungry again. The snicker doodles, let alone the monster cookies. Mm. And my favorite new ones this year, the chocolate, did I just say chocolate? I sound like my nephew Brady when he was five. Chocolate. The chocolate cinnamon cookies. They don't sound that great. Wow. They make your mouth catch on fire in a beautiful way. Cinnamon Dawson, I'm getting hungry here. I better shut up and stop talking about the cookies. We invite you to stop by from 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock in that parking lot right by the manor or near Trinity Presbyterian Church here as we celebrate Christmas. That being said, my friends, that's an easy thing to do. There will be times for you and I where we have to face difficult decisions, where we have to stand up for our faith. Don't be afraid of what they think. Joseph wasn't afraid of what they thought. What about you and me? Don't be afraid of what they think. I'm so much more concerned the older I get about what God thinks about what I do compared to what others do. Be much more concerned about what God's thinking instead of those around us. Don't be afraid of what they think. And so as you, <laughs> as you sign off today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. Filling you with his courage, may God give you peace. Amen.